ES Audio. Hi, I'm John Weeks. This is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Let's go. Coming up, the cosmic fingerprint captured in space. But first, an NHS doctor has told us blood donors have been absolutely amazing in responding to a serious shortage of blood supply in the health service. There is no doubt that we have the most amazing people in the UK who give blood. Yesterday, the NHS revealed that hospitals have been asked to postpone non-urgent surgery because of it. Dr Farooq Shah, a London-based consultant haematologist, said since then, more than 100,000 people have come forward. The health service has warned that current overall blood stocks stand at 3.1 days, And Dr. Shah told us what has caused the shortage. Covid rates are going up in the community, flu rates are going up in the community and we're getting a lot of short-term cancellations from our blood donors and that can't be helped. Dr. Shah said staffing problems in the NHS are also to blame for the shortages as fewer medical professionals are available to take the blood. We have real challenges with staff retention and recruitment. The cost of living crisis has impacted on that. We've got a big issue with staff on sickness absence. Three environmental conservation groups in the UK have come together to put pressure on the government to secure some of its policies that protect nature. The government is saying they're going to remove all trace of EU legislation by the end of December 2023. And many of these thousands of pieces of legislation relate to the environment, to things like water quality, employment law and animal rights. That's Katie Jo Luxton from the RSPB, which has joined forces with Wildlife Trusts and the National Trust to challenge what they've called a government U-turn on protecting nature. She said the government's planning to review a lot of European legislation based on protecting our environment by the end of next year. But she's worried that's not enough time to properly consider the laws and guidance. The risk is that pieces of legislation don't get brought across to British law and then they cease to exist. And even more than that, they're saying that ministers will take on the right to decide whether they're amended or repealed and there'll be limited parliamentary scrutiny. Many of the changes being proposed by the government are linked to its plans for economic growth. But Katie Joe told us environmental protections rarely get in the way of that. No survey has ever found large and negative impacts of environmental legislation on overall productivity, either in the short or the long run. And that's actually a quote from the DEFRA evidence and analysis theory on economic growth. A research team in the US has shown that human brain tissue, when implanted into the brains of rats, can integrate and grow as part of its host's organ. Scientists believe the technique could be an entirely new way to study brain disorders such as autism, but the research has raised questions from some experts, including those at biotech firm the Roche Innovation Centre in Switzerland, about how ethical it is. The team at Stanford University took clumps of human brain cells the size of sesame seeds which were grown in a test tube and implanted them into the brains of baby rats. They found that the cells could interact with the rats' brains, receive sensory signals from their whiskers, and even be trained to send instructions to other parts of the rat's brain. The James Webb Telescope continues to bring us epic pictures from the cosmos. And its latest image is no different, showing what looks like a human fingerprint made by the light of two stars shining through clouds of space dust. Experts said 17 dust rings were created when streams of gas blown into space by the two stars collided, forming the dust. An astronomer said it shows just how powerful the James Webb Telescope is, as telescopes on Earth could only capture two of the dust rings. New research suggests it may be possible to detect signs of dementia as early as nine years before diagnosis. Experts at the University of Cambridge looked at the histories of some patients and found that they were showing signs of cognitive impairment several years before their symptoms became obvious enough for a diagnosis. They say the signs were often subtle but could be useful to recognise early so professionals can intervene at an earlier stage and reduce people's risk of developing dementia. Researchers believe they'll have a better chance of seeing if some medications are effective if they can test them on people before they've been diagnosed with the condition. 
coming up next, the test tube brain cells that learnt to play a video game. Plus, do we take Alexa too seriously? Why not hit follow and give us a rating in the meantime? Welcome, Welcome back. back. With Halloween just around the corner, it appears scientists are getting in the mood for it early on. A team of researchers in Australia have grown brain cells in a lab that have learned how to play the 70s computer game Pong. Experts at Cortical Labs in Melbourne say their mini brain can sense and respond to its environment, with one of them calling it the first sentient lab-grown brain in a dish. The mini brain was connected to the video game via electrodes and learned to play in just five minutes. Now, experts believe using a combination of medications to treat high blood pressure and high cholesterol could prevent millions of premature deaths, heart attacks and strokes each year. Two leading cardiologists are calling for pharmaceutical companies across the world to start offering patients a polypill to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. They said, despite the substantial scientific evidence of the high effectiveness, safety and affordability of the polypill, it's rarely used. And finally... Hello, how can I help you? Are we all taking our smart assistants a bit too seriously? Well, it turns out a majority of us believe the likes of Siri, Alexa and Google Assistant have human-like personalities. A team at the University of Hertfordshire surveyed 500 people and found that 60% of them agreed the assistants were sympathetic, calm, dependable and conventional. However, a fifth of them said they didn't trust the assistants, seeing them as having negative personality traits, like being more unsympathetic and dishonest. The researchers said, because we've developed these ways of perceiving and making judgments about people, when new tech comes along that resembles a human, we fall back on these ways of thinking. You are up to date. Come back at four o'clock for the Leader Podcast for more news and analysis from the Evening Standard. We will be back tomorrow afternoon at one. See you then.